Good evening and welcome to the DeKalb County School District Virtual Tech Cafe. Tonight's featured session is Navigating the Resources of Lunchpad and Team Up with Microsoft Teams. This event is a collaboration between the Information Technology Department, the Office of Federal Programs, the Division of Student Support and Intervention that houses the Parent and Family Engagement Department. I would like to share a brief overview of the Parent and Family Engagement Team. We provide supports to families and schools who need assistance accessing school and district resources, addressing concerns, and building skills to be strong partners in their students' education. We're dedicated to developing educated, engaged, and empowered parents and staff who are partners in creating great schools in every region. Family engagement resources and supports are available through the Department of Parent and Family Engagement and the Title I Office of Federal Programs Regional Parent Centers. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Parent and Family Engagement Team led by our Deputy Superintendent of Student Supported Intervention, Dr. Vancine Tinsley, our Parent and Family Engagement Department Manager, Mrs. Marcia Cowart. We have six dynamic district level family engagement liaisons that support the family engagement team. They are Narva Dunlap, Richard Stevens II, Latanya Winters Buford, Stephanie Valentine Forbes, Demond Gunter, and Mrs. Ann Fierro. Please welcome the Title I Parent Center facilitators. They are led by seven regional parent facilitators who in every region of the Cab County School District support the families. This is funded by the Title I Office of Federal Programs led by the Executive Director, Dr. Maisha Warren. We have Ms. Angelica Rosso representing Region 1. Center location is Cross Keys High School. We have Mr. Cleveland Dollison, Region 2. Center location is Tucker High School. We have Mrs. Victoria Turner, Region 3. Her center location is Stevenson Middle School. We have Mr. Joseph Bedford, Region 4, and the center location is Stevenson Middle School also. We have Region 5. So, uh, region 5 is myself, Mrs. Tamisha Favors, located at Miller Grove Middle School. We have Mrs. Demetria Perkett Brown, center location for Region 6, Columbia High School. And last, we have Region 7, Mrs. Annette D. Ford, located at Cedar Grove Middle School. These here are our seven parents Title I facilitators who are glad to support you. So parents, tonight we wanna to go over a couple of uh, reminders. Please, to maximize this webinar, it is best that you log in using a laptop or a computer. If you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A section. The chat is being monitored by members of the Instructional Technology and Title I Parent Center facilitators. Questions are being recorded. Therefore, you can have a, another opportunity to hear this back if you miss anything tonight. Some of our answers will be provided to you in the chat or during the Q&A. At this time, I would like for you to welcome uh, those members who make up our informational technology team, and they are the talents who give us the experts on these webinars. And Mrs. Terry Webb will be the one to introduce them. Ms. Terry Webb. All right, well, we have Region 1, Mrs. Laura Crate. Representing Region 2, we have Risa Azar. Representing Region 3, which we don't have anybody, but I definitely, the, out of the seven, we have someone to support that region. Region 4, we have Mrs. Chasman Harris. Region 5, we have Terry Webb. Region 6, we have Dwayne Johnson. And Region 7 is Mrs. Angela Johnson. I'm sorry, guys, my microphone was on mute. <laughs> we'll get started. Today, I want to um, get started with discussing our topics today. Today's outcome, by the end of this session, you'll know how to navigate and access Launchpad resources, as well as how to navigate um, within um, Microsoft Teams. Again, if you have any questions, please type your questions inside of the chat box, and we'll answer the questions throughout the webinar. With this being said, I'm going to go live and get started with our presentation.
Okay, as we discussed today, we are going to get started with, um, with um, Microsoft Team as well as Launchpad. If you can see my screen, you should see that I have navigated to the Launchpad login screen. In order to get to this session, you need to go to students schools GA. Once you navigate to students.decabschools GA, it will bring you to our login with Active Directory screen. From here, I'm going to click log in with Active Directory. Once I log in with Active Directory, sometimes it asks me to authenticate, meaning put in my student number as well as my password. Once you authenticate, you, you will land on the student's um, portal. This portal is customized according to your child's school as well as grade level. Inside of Launchpad, you'll notice at the top of the screen, the first thing you see are favorite resources. These are resources that the students um, go to um, frequently. And if it's a resource that's your favorite, you can simply heart it by clicking on the heart button and it'll appear at the top of your screen, meaning it's the first application that you see once you log in. From here in this portal, teachers can set up personalized um, pages and um, that will direct the students to various URLs or various applications that are used inside of the student's classroom. For example, if I click on um, World um, History with Mr. Crawford, I can see all of my online resources that Mr. Crawford, my um, history teacher uses in that class. And you'll notice underneath those applications, if it says district below the application, it is a district supported tool. So therefore the student can immediately log in to that application with their username and credentials already saved. However, if you notice this application here, Khan Academy, it provides us with an icon as well as the name of the application, but this is a free resource that's provided inside of Launchpad for students to be able to use. I'm going to navigate back to Launchpad in order for you to show you other applications. While looking at Launchpad, you can notice along the side, you have, um, I call them fast track icons. So if I wanted to go immediately to a section, I can navigate here on the left side and just immediately click and it'll direct me to that location. For today, I wanna to talk about productivity tools as well as some other tools that can be used for research. The first thing I wanna show you inside of the productivity tools are how to navigate to various files or resources that your student may need to use um, while they're in class. Microsoft um, Teams or Microsoft or Office 365 is our school's um, communication tool. But because most of our students are on Chromebooks, we're also a Chromebook district, we also support Google Drive. If I click on Office 365, notice it'll take me directly to my OneDrive account. I like to think of OneDrive as the flash drive inside of the cloud. Because our students have OneDrive accounts, they no longer have to worry about saving information into the cloud, it goes directly into this space, whereas the student can click on the word new and they can organize their information with folders or create Word documents, Excel workbooks and PowerPoints and so forth. All of this is located inside of our Microsoft OneDrive account. If I navigate back to the Launchpad portal, I can also go inside of my Google Drive. Google Drive is where all of my Google files are housed. If I click on the Google Drive, I can see all of the different um, files or applications that I've um, started inside of Google. And I can also click on the grid and navigate to things like Google Classroom, my Google Calendar, and so forth. 
I like to show the Google Calendar because this is where um, all of my assignments can be found if my, if my teacher uses um, the Google Calendar to collaborate. At the same time, if I'm in my OneDrive account, I can click on the grid as well and navigate to the calendar or to-do list to see if there are any um, tasks that need to be complete. So if you notice here, there's several tasks that are due or that were due on today. So if you're trying to see what your child is doing in class or if you um, want to see if they have any tasks that need to com be complete, go to your child's um, Google Drive or OneDrive folder and navigate to their calendar to check and see what's going on. Another cool thing about um, Launchpad is the fact that there's other applications or resources that are available for your students to um, use. For example, I know there's probably a lot of project-based activities um, that your student may need to complete. When you're doing research, we like to um, talk about in the traditional classroom, uh, copyright laws, we talk about um, how to cite sources and things of that nature. Inside of Launchpad, you have a section called Research and Information Tools. One tool I'm gonna focus on today is Britannica. Now, if you remember when I was in school, we had the Dewey Decimal System and the card catalog where we had to go inside of the library and actually ask, hey, can I take off the letter Z um, book from the Britannica um, section? Well, here in the virtual world, students can simply go to Launchpad and they can click on Britannica um, image quest to find images and information about um, certain topics. Now, traditionally, when you log in, you may need a username and a passcode. If you notice here in the Britannica, on the Britannica application, there's a little question mark. That question mark is also called an info circle. If you are logging into one of the applications, you can hover over the info circle and you can get your child's username and password for that application. So for example, in order to log into Britannica ImageQuest, the username is Ed Media and the password is DeKalb. I'm gonna click on Britannica ImageQuest and it's asking me for an access ID. That's where I'm going to put type Ed Media and passcode DeKalb. And then I'm going to click log in. I'm not going to save um, this information. I could if I was going to use it all the time, but I'm not going to save it today. Now I am in Britannica. So say for instance, your child is doing a project on dinosaurs. I can type in this search engine dinosaurs. And as I type the word dinosaurs, notice over 7,000 images appear in this um, section. So these are various clip arts that I can use that are copywritten free or it provides me with a, um, copywritten information in order to be able to share them on my report or in my um, report. So again, Launchpad has a plethora of resources that are available for students to research, navigate, and find out in information or study on their own. One last application I'm going to show you prior to us moving on to Microsoft Teams is one of my favorite um, tools. I'm gonna look under here under all content. And notice under all content, we have applications like BrainPop, CK12 Foundation, Code.org, and other applications. We put these under all content because you can learn all types of content under this tool. So Power My Learning Connect, let's click on there and find out what's inside of this application. So sometimes it takes a few seconds to connect. That's because the application is authenticating or storing your username and password in order to use the tool. If you notice, once I clicked on the application, immediately the student's name appears in the upper right-hand corner. 
I'm going to click on the word library. Once I click on the word library, I can go in and search for different topics or subjects that I want to learn about. I can also locate the grade level. I'm going to click on third grade. It's my favorite grade. And then I'm going to click on the word math. I need to learn about a particular math skill or I want my child to practice about a, a particular math skill. Once I click on the grade level and the subject, I can then narrow down my activities according to the Common Core State Standards aligned in third grade math. So if I notice that my child is struggling with number and operations with using base 10 blocks, I can click on this application and it brings up various resources that my child can use in order to study this um, tool. And notice on the left side of the screen, you can include or exclude various activities um, for your child to learn. So if I'm on an iPad, I want to maybe only include iPad compatible activities. From there, I can check the box and it will narrow down your search. Notice all of these applications, they come from uh, various um, um, applications or resources because they are all vetted from the um, Department of Education. The Department of Education looks at these resources and they decide, hmm, these are tools or apps that will work great for learning these types of skills. The student can then click on the application and they can begin learning or um, playing or doing whatever they need to do in order to learn the skill. So inside of Launchpad, you have a plethora of resources. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. Notice you have your favorite resources. You have your teacher pages that provides personalized resources according to what the teacher uses. In the event, we have different surveys that the students may need to complete. And you also have your digital learning tools. At this time, we're going to move forward and talk about another pro productivity tool, which is Microsoft Teams. Notice Microsoft Teams is found here under productivity tools because it's something that you use in order to be productive during class. I'm going to turn the um, session over to Dwayne. Dwayne is going to go through Office 365 and show you a simulator um, and show you how Microsoft Teams work will um, or can work inside of the classroom. Dwayne. Good evening and thank you, Terry. We are at the point of the show where we talk about uh, our communication tool, which is Microsoft Teams, and I will share my screen to let you guys see what the simulator looks like. So Ms. Webb, kind of took you through Launchpad and she got to the Teams icon and you saw that in your productivity tools for your student. Once you click the Teams icon, it is also a single sign on through Office 365, which will bring you to the screen that you see you currently see now. So you see the Teams general page. I like to call it the general front page. Most teachers refer to this area here as tiles. OK, you'll hear the word tiles a lot. This is what the student sees in terms of every class that they're a member of. And depending on the level, whether it's elementary, middle or high school, each level has a kind of unique setup. For example, in elementary, you may see just that one teacher's class and all subjects underneath in channels. Or in middle school, you may see all of the subjects spread out such as this in high school may look very similar to subjects because we are subject based in middle school and high school. We change classes. So first, your student will have to join the team. Your teacher probably will give you a code or your teacher will add your student based on. Um, adding the name in. So once that uh, student is added in by that teacher, it can be an automatic 
um, add-in or it can be joined by code and it varies um, from uh, teacher to teacher. All right. So here is join or create a team and that code I was referring to. Sometimes teachers will post that in Verge um, and they will also find other means of um, communication to send that to your child. So for the most part, we're going to get those codes through Verge and that is a unique code to your child's class. That code doesn't work for any other course. Here is where they're going to join your uh, students, um, your teacher's team. So once they click the join team button, you will also see a couple tiles here. One is create a team and one is join with the code. The one that you want to focus on uh, with your student is join with the team code. Here's where they have the ability to enter the code from that teacher. Again, they're going to find that code probably in um, Verge. Um, copy that code by simply control C or however you copy um, whatever copy function you want to use and they're going to paste it or control V here. So now once they're in the team, here we see our tiles. In our tiles, um, I'm focusing here on this course, which is the physical science course. Over here, you're going to see activity, chat, teams, assignments, calendar, um, and so forth with your team, with your student. Our next session is section is going to be the general section. This is where the chat is going to happen within the course. Teachers can keep students up to date with announcements. Um, they sometimes they may at mention a student if they're going to direct that question only at that particular student. Um, but for the most part, most of our teachers will use this as an announcement page to let students know what projects are due, um, what um, assignments are coming up and so forth. So this is called our general um, page or post. All right, as you can see, there are various emojis that are used, um, thumbs ups, um, um, hearts, and so forth. All right, and students can also reply um, to their teacher if they are at mention um, in the particular um, the chat or announcement. Also, some teachers will use a calendar um, feature. Um, so those parents that have those teachers that use that calendar feature, um, they can stay up to date with various um, courses that are coming up. Um, they can actually join those synchronous sessions by just clicking that join button in that calendar. So again, the calendar uh, button is another way that teachers are going to communicate with their students uh, to let them know what um, classes are coming up. So in general, each student has their own schedule that they're following over the course of the day. Uh, just make sure your child is um, at the appropriate um, meeting schedule or meeting time for that particular class, just as if they're joining that course in person. Uh, they follow a certain schedule and it is expected um, the same way with virtual learning. All right, so here we're at um, our meeting. So we joined the teacher synchronous meeting. This is probably the first screen that you're going to see once you click that join button. This probably looks a lot familiar to uh, most of you. Um, the first thing we always like to do is make sure that our volume is muted. All right, teachers like that volume muted, um, especially um, if we got 20, 30 kids in the class and we got different noises going on in the background. We got um, students talking, interacting, um, just as if they're in the classroom uh, setting. Um, a teacher just doesn't want every student talking at once. So just make sure you're muted at all times. Um, also, um, our next feature is going to be our conversation um, chat, which is also taking place in the meeting. So they can also chat um, during that session that is synchronous. The next feature is our raise our hand feature. Um, this is just um, general classroom etiquette. Um, we like to use our raise our hand feature. Microsoft rolled this out a couple months ago. It's been very helpful to everybody. Um, when a student has a question, they can simply click the raise my hand, which um, identifies um, with that teacher that that student has a question or has a comment. Um, and I also have seen teachers um, use this as a way to check for understanding. So some may say raise your hand if you understand. All right, so it just depends on the teacher and, and how they, they organize their class. But that feature is, is, is really um, an asset. 
All right, and they can also click it again to lower it. So remember, um, just as you clicked it to raise your hand, you want to click it to lower it as well um, when your um, question has been answered. Um, next feature is our um, red and white telephone hang up button. You always want to make sure that you hang up every single meeting at the end of that um, class session with that particular teacher. OK, always want to make sure you do that. Closes out everything. That way you don't have a, a meeting that's still running and still open um, by accident. Um, and it uh, uh, assures the teacher that we're safe and secure and everybody has left the room. Just as if you don't want students lingering around in your class um, in the brick and mortar setting. All right, so that ends your call um, and it gets you ready for your either asynchronous work or your next meeting session. OK, so the next feature I'm just going to touch on is going to be assignment. Some teachers um, use the assignment feature with their um, students and they can also um, answer those assignments. Um, those assignments can be graded by that teacher and um, turned in all virtually. All right. Again, um, some teachers do use this feature. Um, not all teachers. All right, so um, actually they can put rubrics in them and so forth. And um, also my next um, feature here that um, some of you may be interested in, um, our immersive reader um, button. This immersive reader button is very valuable to um, uh, our um, ELL population, um, students with difficulties with reading um, and so forth. This is a, a, a major breakthrough that Microsoft has been pushing for a couple of years now, and it gives the students the ability to have um, assignments read out loud to them. Uh, which is an awesome feature um, and um, uh, students use this uh, religiously in their classes. It's great to have some students even use it just to, if they're multitasking, um, just reads it out loud to them while they're answering questions. Um, it's, it's actually a really cool tool if you want to um, use that. All right, so um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is um, just a little bit of class etiquette. Um, you want to make sure that your, your student is uh, fully dressed um, in their classroom, um, just like they're in their brick and mortar. They're appropriately dressed. They're ready for class. Um, they're ready. They have all their class materials, whether it be uh, an extra resource that they need. Um, they have their Chromebook. If they have scratch pen, pencil and paper, um, if they're you know working out problems for math, um, it just you want them there focused on the screen and kind of limit the movement around. Just have everything ready to go. Um, so they don't have to get up and go move, um, get more materials, come back, regroup. Um, it's just an easier way to keep um, focused in your class. All right, so just make sure that they're um, ready to go. Um, also, again, I want to reiterate, make sure they're following the, the schedule that they're supposed to follow for that day. Um, also make sure that they press that white, red and white telephone button to hang up at the end of that session. Um, also, um, my last thing is for you parents out there, you're in the live session right now. Um, and I know that um, we touched on this at the beginning of the session. We do have a Q&A there. Um, some schools, um, not just um, for the sake of tech cafes that we're hosting, um, they'll offer, they're offer um, a lot of live sessions um, through the principal, um, through different organizations within the school, uh, different departments, whether it be counseling or whatnot. Um, these live sessions are really great. Um, gives you a lot of insight, a lot of feedback, um, and I'm sure that some of you are asking questions now. And um, you can find that feature over to the right. Should be the right side of your screen there in your live session. Um, you have the ability to ask those Q and A questions and submit those. All right. So hopefully I've answered all your questions about Teams. Um, it's a really great communication tool. Um, if you ever have any questions. Um, don't hesitate to um, ask in the chat. Um, you can also reach out to your um, child's teacher as well. Um, they can provide most of the um, immediate feedback as it pertains to each class because every every teacher in every class is different. All right. Thank you for your time. I'm going to swing it back over now. Our team session has concluded. And again, thank you uh, for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Dwayne, for this. So as we um, stated, Launchpad is a storehouse for all of our free resources. And um, Microsoft Teams is a collaboration tool that we use um, with our students in order to um, host those um, synchronous um, those synchronous and asynchronous um, courses or meetings. I'm sorry, guys. 
in the event that you're having questions or you need uh, further assistance with um, any of the tools that we mentioned today, feel free to go to our virtual learning support for students page. This, support, um, this page here has a host of resources that will help you navigate through our um, DeKalb County School District's ecosystem. We have information about Chromebooks, Launchpad, Verge, Microsoft Teams, as well as Infinite Campus. And in the event that you need assistance with some type of technical support, meaning your Chromebook is not working or you forgot your password or things of that nature, simply click on request for technical support. And there's a video that talks about updating your device as well as another link here that allows you to um, navigate or um, input all of the information that we need to be able to further assist you. Lastly, um, if you your student has a device and you have not updated that device or have not communicated with your school about it, please make sure that you perform your Digital Dreamers device wellness check. We want to make sure that your device is working and it's up to date and you're able to do everything that you need to do in order to be successful in class. If you go to the district's web, um, website or your school's website, and you click on the icon that says Chromebook Device Wellness Check, it'll take you through a few step-by-step -step directions in order to um, perform this. The other thing, your device user agreement. Have you signed your device user agreement saying, yes, I have a device, my device is working, and I'm responsible for that device? If you have not done so, please go to our DeKalb Schools um, website forward slash digital dreamers and perform your device uh, or sign your device user agreement today. Lastly, our next session will be Thursday, September 17th at 6 p.m. During this time, the topic will be Google Smarts, Docs, Google Classroom, and much more. Please tune in for more information about um, Google. We'd like to thank you so much for attending our training today. Hopefully you've learned a plethora of information that can help you and your child be successful within the DeKalb County School District. Thank you. Ms. Well, before we end, we wanna go and ask a couple questions. Um, there's one that was in the Q&A. Uh, Ms. Welp, can you expound for the parents uh, in regards to Launchpad, and you talked about Microsoft 365, there was a question about how does kids access their student email addresses through um, Microsoft 365. And I know that was one of the apps that you talked about inside of um, Launchpad. And also, uh, could you also expound for a parent who had a question about the Google Slides? And I know that is also part of the Microsoft Office 365. Could you expound on that for the parent, please, for the question? Sure. Now we are a Microsoft Office district, so we support training on um, Microsoft tools. Um, in order to access your child's um, email address, you would log into Launchpad. If you can see my screen, okay? From La um, Launchpad, you're going to click on the Office 365 icon. Ms. Well, we can't see your screen. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. It's okay. I'm getting excited, right? <laughs> It's all right. Okay. Can you all see my screen now? Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm going to go back just so that you can see exactly what I did. I clicked on the Office 365 icon. From there, it took me to OneDrive. So for my OneDrive account, if you notice up here in the upper left hand corner, there's a grid. You may hear the topic, uh, you might hear it called grid or you might hear it called waffle or app launcher. From here, I'm going to click on Outlook. Once I click on Outlook, here is my email. So if you notice, this child's teacher has been sending emails all week long. When the student wants to send an email, they click the word new message. 
Once they click the word new message, the child can begin typing in their teacher's um, last name. Or if they have a friend in the class, they can begin to um, type that child's name. Now notice the student will only have access to send emails to students that they are associated with within the school. So they will not um, email back and forth from school to school. So this is um, how you locate your Office 365 account. Going back to um, my files again, I'll go to my Google Drive. I can navigate to my Google Slides by clicking on the grid and then going to Google Slides. Now, if there are any direct um, questions that you have about Google Slides, this would be something that you would have to communicate with your teacher about. Are there any other questions? Ms. Well, we just want to reiterate to the parents that Lunchpad is for students only. We had several questions uh, uh, inquiring about uh, having a Lunchpad login for parents. Could you reiterate that Lunchpad is specifically only for the students? Yes, so Launchpad is connected directly into Infinity Campus. When you register, register your child for school, um, they go through what we call a student information system, which is Infinity Campus. Once the student information system is set up with your child's um, schedule, their grade level, and the different classes that they will teach, Infinity Campus then talks to Clever, which we've branded it as, as Launchpad, and it tells exactly what the child, um, who should have an account, as well as which um, items or applications that they um, would have available for them. Currently at this time, um, Clever or Launchpad does not have a parent um, portal. So if you wanted to access the tool, you would have to go through your student's um, account. Are there any other questions? I don't see any at the moment um, as well, but I do want to thank you. Um, just want to bring a question um, to Mr. Dwayne Johnson. It was a question in regards to um, the chat feature in Microsoft Teams. So um, I can, Dwayne, if you want to answer, I can answer it. I saw the question. The question was, um, do is the is the chat turned on or off? For students, sometimes during um, instruction, teachers do um, do turn off the chat and they turn it off with the purpose of um, making sure that the student is actively listening to whatever it is that the teacher is um, speaking on. Um, the chat feature can be helpful when the child is asking questions. That's, um, however, it can be a distraction when um, students are talking to one another while the teacher is teaching. So I would encourage you to use the raise your hand feature inside of Microsoft Teams if the chat feature is turned off during that instructional time. Thank you so much, Ms. Well, one more question, Ms. Well, can you expound to parents that in the lunch pad, we also have it where the students can actually access their own infinite campus parent portal account? Yes. So if you notice here, if you can still see my screen, um, you'll notice under DCSD Digital Learning Tools, here is the Infinite, Infinite Campus uh, portal account for students. So when they click on it, it's going to ask, are you a student or are you a parent? So if I click on student, it's going to direct me to um, type in my student's username as well as the password, um, which is all the same thing that they use to log into the account. If I select the campus parent option, it does the same exact thing, but it's taking me to the parent tab. And you can tell the difference if you look up here in the address bar, right here it says parents. So that's gonna take you to the parent portal as opposed to if I select the option students, it changes up here and it shows the word students. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much, Ms. Webb. I don't think we have any more. I'm looking. Um, I know we had one question in regards to where the teachers actually house their assignments and um, in regards to Mr. Johnson, Dwayne talked about the assignment tab in Microsoft Teams. Also, we do have Burge. Could you expound on that for the parents? 
Sure. So we have Merge is our district approved learning management system. However, some teachers do use, um, they choose to use Google Classrooms. Now, as um, here I'm logged into Merge under the student's account. If I want to find out about assignments, I would have to click on the word courses. Once I click on courses, I'm going to select um, the, t the course that I need to study off of. So I'll select world history. From the world history tab, if the teacher had assignments um, or coded the assignment um, as an assignment, it will show here on the right hand side where um, it says tasks. However, I can click on resources and from resources, um, I can go into the various units in order to show assignments. This teacher must not use um, Verge, so I'm going to go to another course to see if I can find an assignment. OK, here we go. So in this teacher's class, I clicked on courses. From courses, I, select, I selected world history. Once I selected world history, I always land on the overview page. And as Dwayne talked about earlier, sometimes teachers um, will post their code in order to get into the classroom. Most of the time they post it here in this section. So here the teacher made an announcement and she's given the instructions, go to Teams for our video sessions. And then in this case, she says, go to Google Classroom for resources, assignments, and so forth. So although this teacher is using Google Classrooms, she's communicating to their, her students exactly what it is that they need to do. In the event that there is an assignment um, for this class, say she was using this tool um, regularly, all assignments are located under the resources tab. You'll see in the resources tab where all of the um, folders are set up according to units. And from those units, the assignments will appear in this section. Let me go to a, a sample course where some actual assignments are. So here's a course here. And if you notice, there's an overdue message saying that this child has an assignment that's overdue. It was a homework assignment with a deadline of August 26th. So I, I, I can go here and click directly on the assignment, or I can go to the resources tab. From the resources tab, I'm gonna click inside of this elementary folder. And then from here, the lessons are organized according to lessons. So lesson one, lesson two, one teacher may have it as week one, week two. It all depends on how the teacher organizes their lesson. And from here, I could just click on the task or um, click on an image and or click on a title of an assignment and that assignment will appear. Hopefully this appears shortly. Does this help you with um, locating tasks in, or assignments inside of Verge? So here's the assignment. Are there any other questions about navigating to um, through courses or assignments in Verge? Yes, Ms. Well, thank you for that uh, answer for that parent. Uh, we did have another question. It was in regards to team and again to our parents. Um, the question was, do parents have a login to Teams because there's a delay between infinite campus showing the missing assignment of if the child received a zero and actually the missing assignment? And again, Ms. Ms. Wilb, you can expound on how Teams is for our students. Teams is all of our tools are student use um, tools. And so these tools are, um, I'm, I'm in, okay, let's see. Cross my fingers, hopefully it'll take me in. Um, Teams is controlled by the teacher. So once the Teams, as well as the grading system is controlled by the teacher. Once the teacher puts an assignment in here, like if, for example, I notice there's a red button here, it shows that the child has an assignment due. Once they go inside of here and complete the assignment, it's up to the teacher to post that grade inside of the class. So I can go in and look at the assignments, but then I need to select the class in which the assignment is due. I'm just going to select one of the classes here. And it shows if he had he or she had assignments assigned and they were not complete, it was showing this top section here. But the assignments that were completed are down in this lower section. So once the student or the teacher um, complete um, turn get 
completes the assignment or once the student completes the assignment, the teacher has to then transfer this grade over to Infinite Campus. Again, teachers um, should be posting roughly two to three grades per week inside of the tool, but that's something that we can't control. It's the timing of the teacher when he or she decides to put that assignment there or the grade for the assignment. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you so much, Ms. Webb. Um, and I'm trying to pan the chat box for you and see if any other additional questions. I think um, a couple of questions are, are more technical questions. We had one in regards to Infinite Campus uh, from a parent and, and her she does not see the other child. Um, it's not linked to her account. She asked how can, how can she get assistance with that? So if you have two, if you have initially, uh, well, child, children are linked according to the household. Um, I know we did a virtual registration this year and um, the SIS department is working on cleaning up files at this time, if I can call it that. So basically what's going to happen is inside of Infinite Campus, they will link your student to um, both children to one household, meaning the address. And once they link it to the household, that's when all of the students will appear on um, your Infinite Campus app. If you're in a situation where your students are not linked, I would encourage you to put in a help desk ticket um, or call your child's school and the registrar can possibly link those accounts for you. All right, thank you, Ms. Webb. Uh, Ms. Webb, I do want to thank you for uh, taking part in that uh, question and answer for our parents. Uh, we do want to reiterate that we have seven Title I parent facilitators along with the district level family engagement, family, uh, parent and family engagement department that can assist with any additional questions and along with our instructional uh, technology department. And we're so happy that we were able to bring tonight for you to our parents navigating the resource of Lunchpad and teaming up with Microsoft Teams. We hope that we provided you with some information that will give you a greater insight to what uh, your students are utilizing here in the Cab County School District. And if you did not get an opportunity to visit one of our uh, past sessions, we do ask that you, uh, upon your leisure, take your time and go to uh, the Cab County School District uh, Family Engagement YouTube channel. And we have the past sessions um, for um, session one we had on the DCSD, um, the ecosystem overview. We also had the session two, connect with Verge. And uh, our last session we had prior to this session was plug it into the Infinite Campus Parent Portal. So please take the time and opportunity if you did not go back, you can actually view those uh, YouTube channels um, of those prior recordings and get additional information. Again, we thank you, we appreciate you so much, and we look forward to you um, joining us on September the 17th for our next session um, and with Google Classroom and Google Docs. So again, to all the family, parents and families of the Cab County School District, uh, join us next Thursday, September the 17th, uh, it's 6 o'clock p.m. for the topic, Google Smart Docs, Classrooms, and more. Uh, again, this virtual tech cafe is for all the families of the Cab County School District because we want you to be plugged all in with our e-learning system here in the Cab. So again, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and have a great evening.